Hi guys, I'm Seema Safat. I'm a senior here at Emory. I'm a women's studies major and minoring in global health. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about Lavandula angustifolia, which is also known as true lavender or English lavender. And it is part of the Lamiaceae family. All right, um, just a quick overview. I'm going to go through the botanical description traditional uses, chemistry and pharmacology, biological activity, clinical studies, contraindications, current use in allopathic and CAM therapies, and finish things off with conclusions. <coughs> All right, um, so lavender is indigenous to the Mediterranean and the Pyrenees, and it is cultivated in all over the world. Um, some places include Argentina, China, France, the United Kingdom, and the United States. It's a perennial plant that grows two to three feet in height, and <coughs> it has silvery green leaves and blue-violet flower spikes. Um, lavender is best cultivated in full sunshine, and it can survive in a wide variety of soils. Um, however, the soils have to be well-drained since they don't sit in very well with wet soil. Um, so lavender is considered drought tolerant. It survives in temperatures as low as negative 15 degrees Celsius, and it requires very little fertilizer. And it's also bothered by few pests, making it a very adaptable and strong flowering plant. So for traditional uses, lavender derives from the Latin word lavare, which means to wash. The Greeks, Persians, and Romans used lavender perfume in their baths and their laundry. Um, some interesting traditional uses that I found were Egyptians used to wrap use the linens to wrap the mummies, and they soak those linens in lavender. Um, in India and Tibet, their cultures consider lavender a healing agent, and it was used as a medical treatment for a mental illness. Um, in Iranian folk culture, their folk medicine, they use lavender to help with inflammatory disease, and decoctions of lavender flowers were used as a carminative, a diuretic, a anti-epileptic, anti-rheumatic, and an analgesic. In France, Charles VI and his court sat on cushions stuffed with lavender flowers um, because it helped repel insects. And then finally, in the United Kingdom and France, the perfume industry used um, lavender oil as a main component for a lot of the perfumes. And their perfume industry dates back from the 12th century. So for chemistry, um, lavender is consists of hundreds of um, constituents and it's rich in volatile oils. And um, the highest concentration of constituents that lavender has are linalool and linoleal acetate. <coughs> and um, both of these constituents are known for um, central nervous system depression. Linoleal acetate is considered a narcotic and linalool is known as a sedative. So due to the calming effects of these two constituents, um, there's been a lot of studies on lavender. So in vitro studies um, have found that lavender is effective against bacterial and fungal infections, um, especially those resistant to antibiotics. So a lot of scientists find that there's a potential treatment in rhinitis patients since there's a lot of bacteria that's resistant to antibiotics in the nose. Um, and then Scientists have also seen that it's a successful acaricide or a tick and mite repellent. In the Sorites cuniculi, or the rabbit tick, um, they were treated with linalool and they lost movement and eventually died. So although the mechanism of action is still not known, um, lin linalool is known as a uh, alternative acaricide. Um, linalool acetate was tested for its analgesic properties. Um, mice were induced with pain with these two tests, the formalin test and the acetic acid induced writing test. And um, after lavender oil was administered after these tests, the scientists noted that there was a reduction in the number of pollocks. So that proved that there was an analgesic property to lavender. And finally, um, lavender was tested for its anxiolytic effect because linalool is known as a sedative. Um, it was tested on rats on an elevated maze. But scientists noticed that there was no time difference on the open arm and the closed arm in the maze. And there was no neural hormonal changes in the, um, in the rat's blood. So linalool does not provide enough proof as an anxiolysis. 
However, there was decreased motor movements in the rats, so there's evidence to suggest that lavender can affect the central nervous system. So I looked into three clinical studies, um, one that was done in 2007 with dementia patients in Hong Kong. Um, there were, they were separated into two groups, so one group slept with a lavender oil diffuser at night, and then the other group slept with a diffuser with sunflower oil, which is not known to have behavioral effects. And caregivers noted a decreased, um, decreased like aggression and irritability between patients that slept with the lavender oil diffuser. Um, so although that support for um, lavender as an anxiolytic is weak, there is some evidence with humans that suggests the ability to reduce anxiety. Um, in a small study in 1999 with 20 children hospitalized with HIV, nurses noted that there was a decreased need for analgesics, and they also said that they noted that chronic chest pain, um, muscle spasms, and neuropathy were almost alleviated completely. And then finally, in 1994, the effect on lavender on postpartum perineal pain um, was examined on 635 women. So midwives observed the, um, the mothers and also helped give them these lavender oil-infused baths, and then mothers recorded their discomfort. And the group that had pure lavender oil noted and had the lowest mean um, pain scores. So for contraindications, lavender is generally regarded as safe or grass. However, if you have an allergy to lavender or hypersensitivity or with any member of the C family, you should probably exercise caution when handling lavender. Um, there is a potential for lavender to heighten the effects of barbiturates and depressants. So due to these reports um, saying that <coughs> lavender can produce like a narcotic-like effect on humans and animals. Um, and also, since there is a varying amount of coumarins in lavender, um, theoretically, this can increase the effects of anticoagulant medication. Um, so although there's no reported lethal dose of lavender, consuming over 0.5 grams per day has an effect of nausea, vomiting, and anorexia. Um, so for current use in allopathic and camp therapies, I couldn't find anything on um, any uses in allopathic medicine, but um, lavender, and especially lavender oil, is very popular in camp therapy. It's used for um, culinary uses and for aromatherapy, balneotherapy, which is treating diseases with baths, and massage therapy. Um, and lavender oil has become really popular in the field of clinical aromatherapy, which is a type of holistic nursing that relies heavily on understanding the different species of plants. So the plant that I'm talking about today, Lavandula angustifolia, is known as a relaxant. However, other species of lavender, like <coughs> Latifolia, is a stimulant, and Stoacus is a neurotoxic species of lavender. However, it's a really good bactericide for gram-negative bacteria. Um, clinical aromatherapy uses angustifolia oil to mimic the effect of Valium. So in conclusion, lavender is a wonderful antibacterial and antifungal, especially for those um, with, especially for those um, that are resistant to antibiotics. Um, it also has its involvement in clinical aromatherapy and its involvement in pain management, which is a seventy million dollar industry here in the United States. Um, although anxiolytic support is weak. Um, there have been clinical studies to prove <coughs> otherwise. And I believe that there's future research to explore the, diff the effects of linalool as a complement to anesthesia. So although there's a lack of consistent data, the true effects of lavender and its therapeutic importance can have a potential contribution to human health. Thank you.